A few weeks ago, I was in a conversation with a few folks my age, or right around my age, who were voicing concerns about all the information kids get online. During the conversation, stats were thrown around about how much data we're subject to. And apparently, every person creates something like 1.7 megabytes of data every second. <laughs> That's a lot. And it amounts to something like 2.5 quintillion data bytes every day. That's a lot. At some point in the conversation, someone said something about kids knowing too much. I don't remember the exact phrase, but it was something along the lines of, it's just too much information. They're overwhelmed. And that actually gave me pause. Something about it rang true, but not entirely. You see, I wonder if the hang up here isn't that there's too much to know. I wonder if it's that I feel responsible for caring about all of it, or even too much of it. And saying I don't care about everything can be slightly troublesome because everything is a very long list and it includes things you might think are really vital, maybe even essential. So as I confess my limitation of care, I just might be telling you that I don't care about the things you care about, the way you care about them, or to the same depth. And now we might have a problem. And that, that's overwhelming. To feel like I have to overextend my care or pretend to overextend my care in order to remain true to my tribe. What if I care about the hungry teens in Pleasant Hill in Martinez, California? who are, and this is happening right now, sleeping in cars around the corner from their local high school instead of at home so that they know that they can get to school on time. But my heart isn't drawn to the clean water crisis in Sub-Saharan Africa. What if I spend the lion's share of my charitable care time and my energy in the area of child exploitation and human trafficking, and because I do, I don't know enough about trans persons or the biology involved or the science involved to care responsibly. What if I don't care about what you care about? What if it scares me to tell you that? What if it's not the amount of information available to us? What if it's the degree of responsibility we feel that we're supposed to have for that information? I don't have the time or the energy or the resources to effectively and consistently care for more than a few things. That's just true. And I know it's true. I also know it's true that there are absences on or from my care list that have been disappointing to more than a few people. And that's been a point of stress at times. Moving the question from what do I care about to what should I care about. Author and missiologist Michael Frost gets a lot of questions that basically boil down to the question of care. Because he's in the field of teaching religiously minded people about responsible mission, he regularly converses with folks who are searching the world around them for urgent needs to fill so that they can participate in the grand work of redemption and restoration. Rather than prescribe to folks a, an attention to that which matters most, Michael turns the question towards people. To whom are you called, he asks. And then, who will go with you? To whom are you called and who will go with you? Michael redirects issue-focused conversations to the people whose actual human, soft, and precious lives are affected, altered, damaged, or saved. The people whose fundamental value is the foundation of value for any and every issue or idea in all of human history, which is why I have been so richly blessed by David Dark's commitment to Reality Winner. It is her complex and sacred humanity that is David's doorway into care for issues and ideas like criminal justice, responsible citizenship, and a more comprehensive expression of what it might mean to actually be pro-life. To love a person, David writes, is to love a process. Yes. Also, to love a person is to enter into a world of ideas and dilemmas and issues, but to find them in their proper context, in case, in the impermanent flesh of humanity. So, what if we're not so much overwhelmed by the amount of information available to us? What if we're simply distracted by it? 
And in our distraction, we lose touch with what enlivens us, with what grounds us, with what makes any and all of the 2.5 quintillion daily data bytes worth a thing at all. That our hearts are not built to simply know the world around us and those who live in it. We are built to care for the world around us and those who live in it, so far as we're capable.